Hi, and welcome to PrestaTraining.com. My name is Kurt Donahue, and I'm going to be your host for this training module. In this module, we're going to learn how to download the most current, stable release of PrestaShop. I'll also teach you how to set up a MySQL database on your web host, and then we'll go through the install process so you can install your downloaded version of PrestaShop and actually have a store that you can start to load products up to and organize the way that you'd like it organized. So let's go ahead and start by downloading the most current version of PrestaShop. So before we download the most current version of PrestaShop, I'd like to point out that there actually is a set of installation instructions at PrestaShop.com, but it almost intuitively makes you download PrestaShop before you actually get to the instructions. So I'm going to do it a little bit either in sequence or out of sequence, however you want to look at it. But I'm going to show you where the instructions are first. Go ahead and click Download PrestaShop. And we are going to be at the Download PrestaShop screen. But down here, there's actually an Install PrestaShop page. And the Install PrestaShop page basically gives you a sequence of events to create a database, check a few functionalities, download, upload, and install PrestaShop. So we're going to be going through all of this, but I wanted to point this out before we actually started because I am going to do it a little bit out of sequence. I actually just prefer to show you to download it first and upload it to your web host, and then I'm going to teach you how to create the database. And we're not even going to worry about this because unless you're self-hosting, 99% of the time your web host already is going to have a PHP version with the GD library functionality already turned on. So you don't even need to worry about that. And uh, if your web house for some reason doesn't have it turned on, you can just ask them if they will. Hopefully they'll cooperate. So I'm going to be referring back to these installation instructions, and I've got it opened up here on a separate page, so I'm going to be flipping back and forth from these pages. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning. So the best place to be is www.prestashop.com. We're going to go ahead and download the PrestaShop. Now, it might appear that you have to actually put in your name and your email address, but you really don't. If you just click on the download button, it takes you right to the download area. And you'll see that there's two two versions of PrestaShop here. This one, which is the stable release, okay, for production, that's what we're going to be working with. And this release here is actually in beta testing, so for those folks that have got a little experience with PrestaShop and want to try something a little bit more advanced, they can go ahead and try this, but you would not want to build your store on this release of PrestaShop because there are probably a number of bugs in it that have yet to be worked out. So let's go ahead and download this version of PrestaShop, which happens to be 1.3.4. Just click Download PrestaShop, and it'll ask you to open it with some sort of a WinZip program or a zip program and it's already downloaded. Once you have PrestaShop downloaded, there are a couple different ways you can get it uploaded to your actual web host. What I normally like to do is put a copy of it on my desktop. It's a lot easier than downloading it every single time, so I'll take the time and actually just grab it, pull it out to my desktop, and it'll go through the extraction process. Okay, now that we're complete with the extraction process, we've got a copy of PrestaShop on the desktop. And if I open this up, you can see it's got a whole bunch of file folders and files in it. Now, there is another way to do this if you want to do it more directly. I'm using my FTP program called FileZilla. Yeah, you can use whatever you want. I happen to like FileZilla because it's free and very easy to use. So the first thing I did is I actually made a connection to my host with my account and I need to get into my public HTML file folder which I'm already there and then the next thing I need to do is either create or get into the area where I'm going to create my store so some of you will just be well actually maybe most of you will just be creating a PrestaShop store and one way to do that is to go into your root directory in your public HTML and actually create a file folder called PrestaShop, which I've done before. That isn't what I'm going to be doing this time. I'm actually going to be teaching you how, in some later videos, to integrate a blog 
into your Presta Shop shopping cart. And um, I'm going to do that in a different area than what I showed you there. So I've created a new file folder called Presta Training. And in Presta Training, I've already got my WordPress stuff set up in there. So what I need to do, though, is create another file folder for this Presta Shop download. And I'm just going to go ahead and create a directory. And we'll call it Presta Training Demo. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Okay, so now I've got my new file folder there. Okay, there's a couple a couple ways to actually get the Presta Shop Training Download into this file folder. I could have actually just taken it from my WinZip download and pulled it in here and dropped it in here. Or if I want, I can grab it off of my desktop. But either way, it will work. So I'm just going to do it this way. So I grabbed it and I dropped it, and now it's in the process of extracting uh, the files to press the training demo, and then it will begin do downloading all of those files. Now this is a pretty lengthy process. Uh, even with my cable connection, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes. So we're going to step away and come back when the process is done. Okay, we're back, and now we've downloaded our Press the Shop folder with all of the files that come from the download. Now most of the time, if you're just setting up a shop, you would not actually download the Press the Shop folder itself. You just put the folders and files that came with the Press the Shop download in the place in the root directory that you actually want to have your shop. But because I'm doing a demonstration training shop, I needed to have a separate folder that I could rename. And the reason I wanted to do that was because I can do demonstrations on different versions of Presta Shop. So what I'm going to do, just to kind of keep track of this, is rename this as 1.3.4. Actually, it's 1.3.4.0, I believe. And we'll go ahead and do that. And then when we look in here, we've got all of our folders and files that came from the actual download of that particular version. Here they are down here. Okay. Now the next step is to go back to the instructions, go back to the wiki. And uh, right now we've finished step five, upload the contents. Now here it says not the folder itself, but I just explained to you why I did upload the folder. Most of the time you will not. So we've got that part done. And now we're moving on to step six. So let's just go ahead and read this. It says, while you have your FTP connected to your web hosting server, make sure that the following Presta Shop folders have write permissions, also known as the CHMODD, or I'm sorry, CHMOD777. Now, this part right here, you want to ignore. This is wrong. You don't want to do that because it opens your web host and your particularly your file structure that your web host is serving for you, it opens it up to attack. The most permission you want to have is a 755, and I'll explain that as we start changing these permissions. But some web hosts may require a 777 in order for Presta Shop to work. If that's the case, you should probably look at getting a different web host. That's um, really out of date technology most of the time, and it's just not appropriate to allow your self to be that open to attack. If you have to do 777, I would suggest getting a different web host if I were you. I use Bluehost and they do not require 777 in order for Presta Shop to work. And I don't believe GoDaddy does and I don't believe HostGator does. Okay, so let's keep moving on. This is one thing to pay close attention to. Now we're going to apply these permissions, this CHMOD755, but we're not going to apply the permissions recursively. Okay, and I'll show you what that means here in a little bit. But essentially, we're just not going to apply it to the subfolders. We're only going to apply it to these folders that it says right here. We do have some recursive folders that we have to deal with, but that's down here. So let's start with this one right here. So we have to do config, upload, download, 
and then we have to get all the way down to compile here but we start our tools go to smarty and then go to compile so let's uh, start with config I just happen to be on it right now that was kind of a coincidence so just right click on it hit file permissions and actually <clears throat> it's set to 755 right now Bluehost doesn't set it to 777 sets it to 755 now if you want to change these let's just look and see what 777 does so if I set it to 777 it's going to basically take owner permissions, group permissions, and public permissions and give you read, write, and execute options for every level. But 755 only gives you read, write, and execute for the owner, while group and public permissions do not have the write capability. So someone can't come in and write um, harmful files to your, um, to your file structure. Now the other thing we want to notice is that we are not going to recurse into the subdirectories. This is what the recurs recursive part is about. So this looks pretty good. We'll just leave it alone. And you can also see the permissions over here. Now if you're using something different than FileZilla, it may look different to you. Actually I do have the ability to do this through Bluehost and the cPanel, but it's very cumbersome. So I don't like to use it. FileZilla is much, much easier to use and uh, easier to see my permissions with, easier to upload and delete files. A lot of good things come from that. All right, so let's look at the next one again. So we just did config. We need to do upload, download. Let's scroll down. Here's upload. That's already got a file permission of 755, so it's good enough. Download is also 755. Okay, now we need to find tools, Smarty, and compile. Tools, so double click on that. And there's Smarty, double click on that. And compile. And actually compile is already set to 755. So that is fine as well. Now yours may not have been set to 755 and you maybe had to change all of them. So um, your screen may not be exactly the same as mine. So let's move on to the next one. And on the next one, we want to have write permissions and apply these permissions recursively to the following subfolders. Okay, So we're going to do image or IMG mails, modules, and then we go through themes, press the shop language, and translations is our last one. So let's do image. Oops, I need to go back up. So to go back up in FileZilla, you can just double click on this two ellipse, double click again, and I'm back in the main folder. So image, we'll do file permissions, 755 but we need to recurse into subdirectories. Now we don't want to apply it to files. We just want to apply it to the directories. So first option is a big no. Second option is also no. We want to click the third option to do directories only because that's what it said here. So it said then make sure the following folders, it didn't say files, it just said folders, have write permissions and apply these permissions recursively to their subfolders. didn't say anything about files. So that's why we're doing it that way. And it'll be this way each time we change the following files to the recursive directories. So go ahead and click OK. And it'll go through each one of the directories and give it a 755. OK. Next one mails and then modules. There's mails, permissions, recurse into subdirectories, apply to directories only. Okay. There's modules, file permissions, recurse into subdirectories, apply to directories only. This one's going to take a little bit longer because there are a lot of 
a lot of file folders in modules. Okay, we've got through that one. Now let's look at the next one, which is themes, press the shop language. Okay, there's themes. Press the shop. L-A-N-G. Oops, actually, I didn't need to do that. I'm just going to go back up. Do lang. File permissions. Recursively apply to directories only. Okay. And then the last one is translations. Got it. Now, in a web browser, we can actually launch the installer. But before we do that, since we skipped steps one and two, we're going to go back to steps one and two. And I will show you in the next video how to create a database. And then also, we'll discuss the G GD library functionality, which actually we're not going to do anything about because the host I use and probably the host you, you use already has GD library functionality already turned on so there's no reason to even deal with it about the only reason you might have to deal with it is if you have a host who is not uh, very PHP proficient and maybe is using old versions of PHP uh, but pretty much any modern hosting company is going to have the GD library functionality turned on so you don't have to do anything Another option might be if you're self-hosting and you've uploaded PHP to your server um, and you have not set this up, then you might have to actually do what it says here and uncomment the line where you've got the extension equals PHP. So chances are you're not going to have to do this. I would not worry about this for right now. All right, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.